All right, I'm back. I want to make an update to the video I made the other day pertaining to the coronavirus. I want to do a slight correction on something I said that wasn't accurate, and I want to give an update. So first and foremost, let's do the correction. In my previous video, I said that the coronavirus is the flu. Now, that's not actually accurate. The coronavirus presents, once someone has been infected, presents a disease that is very similar to the flu. But the flu is actually influenza. So if I'm being precise, the coronavirus is not the flu. It is, however, very comparable in symptoms to the flu. So just to have that said. And because the coronavirus is a separate and distinct virus, let's talk about what we know. We know that right now there are a lot of coronavirus viruses that are in animals that have not, will not, have not yet transferred to humans. However, in humans there are currently, including the most recent coronavirus, there are currently seven strains. Now there's four that are considered common and they show up on a somewhat regular basis and people get the virus, they get sick, and they recover in almost all cases. There are three that are not so common and you've probably heard of them. There's the coronavirus MERS, there's coronavirus SARS, and then most recently the one that came out of China, which is now being called SARS-CoV-2. And the disease that once you get infected, the disease is being called COVID-19. So there are seven distinctly different strains that we know of that can transfer from human to human. And the most recent, the disease itself is called COVID-19 and the strain of coronavirus is called SARS-CoV-2. S-A-R-S-C-O-V-2. For anybody that wants the specific details. Now, what makes the coronavirus different from influenza? Well, this particular strain can spread prior to symptoms being shown. It spreads quickly, and it can spread, as I just said, prior to the symptoms actually being visible. So you don't even know you have it and you can spread it, which makes it highly contagious. Unlike influenza, which I don't want to downplay the severity of the flu, but unlike influenza, the coronavirus is more likely, as I understand it, to result in respiratory issues, including the likelihood of pneumonia. Now, the risk increases dramatically for the very young infants and the very old. I was looking at a graph earlier today showing the infection rate of coronavirus per age and how different it is. And the most deadly cases are in people that are 80 years of age or, or older. So a lot of people are saying, well, the coronavirus, you know, it's not that big of a deal. And for normal, healthy, regular individuals, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. You're going to contract the virus, presuming that you wind up in a situation where you're going to contract it. You're going to get sick. You're going to recover. And then you'll be fine very comparably to the flu. 
we think about the flu and as Americans, I don't know about other countries, we typically don't really get too concerned about it. And in that regard, the coronavirus is not a big deal. However, I'm sure we all know people that have children. And even if our individual parents or grandparents have passed away, we all know people that have parents or grandparents that are older. And that has to be taken into account. We also know people that have issues dealing with causing their respiratory system to not function as well as people that are considered normally healthy. Things that can cause a problem would be, for example, diabetes or heart disease or possibly, to one degree or another, smoking. Um, if you're obese, that will impact your respiratory. And age, very old, very young, your respiratory system is at an increased risk when you contract a virus that develops some sort of illness in your respiratory system. So that's where the death concern comes in. If you have some kind of compromised immune system, if you're very young or very old, the risk is significantly increased. So even though the coronavirus and the illness that it causes may not be what you consider something serious, it can be under the right circumstance. Right now, the coronavirus has spread. I actually have this written down, so let me make sure I've got this uh, correct number here. It has spread to 60 countries, okay? Right now, it's March 4th, 2020. So as of today, the coronavirus illness has spread to 60 countries. The World Health Organization is borderline ready to call this a pandemic. Now, just because it might be labeled as a pandemic doesn't mean the world is coming to an end. It's just a case of the severity of the spread of the disease. And because it is very contagious, the likelihood of it being called a pandemic is pretty good. Right now it's an epidemic because of how fast and how quickly it is spread. Now, in case anybody is interested, I wanted to give a quick update on how many cases have shown up in the United States and where. So let me do a rundown on that. Again, March 4th, Wednesday, 2020. This is the current case count in the United States. Arizona, one case. California, there have been 29 cases with one death. And I'm not entirely sure I thought there was a second death, but no, I guess that wasn't California. I'm sorry. So California, let's redo that. 29 cases, one death. Florida, there are three confirmed cases. And because of the confirmed cases, Florida has actually canceled the Miami Ultra Music Festival, which is the first time in its history that it's been canceled. So it's kind of a big deal. Georgia, two confirmed cases. Illinois, four confirmed cases. Massachusetts, one confirmed case and one as of right now being tested but presumed to be the coronavirus. New Hampshire, one case. New York, six cases. North Carolina, one case. Oregon, three cases. Rhode Island, there are two cases currently being tested, but they presume they are the coronavirus, 
but it's not actually confirmed at the moment. Washington State, 39 cases with 10 deaths from the coronavirus. Now, the unfortunate thing for Washington State is they had an outbreak in a nursing home, I believe it was. So right there you've got the highest risk population in a contained area that have become infected. So that's, that's where the death count is coming from in Washington State. It's unfortunate, but that's what's going on there. Wisconsin, one case. Now, just to give a comparative so people have an idea in case they want to. Per the World Health Organization, um, so far, the coronavirus has 93,000 cases worldwide with just over 3,000 deaths, 3,198 as of March 4th. To put that in perspective with the flu, okay, with influenza, normally speaking in any given flu season, there are 15 million worldwide cases. As of right now, coronavirus only has 93,000. So the flu has 15 million worldwide in any given flu season. Of those 15 million with the flu, 5 million become what they call serious cases. And of those 5 million, as a general number per year, 650,000 deaths worldwide are caused by the flu, by influenza. So, Again, when you're looking at influenza in a given flu season, you're dealing with 650,000 deaths per year worldwide. Where right now, with coronavirus, we've only had just over 3,000. We had 3,198. So, influenza really is a bigger concern on the long term and big scale. But generally speaking, people don't really get too concerned about influenza. They don't care about the flu. Oh, if I get sick, I'll recover. No big deal. So try to try to bear that in mind and keep that as a perspective. If you're not worried about the flu, you don't have to panic about coronavirus. You just have to be aware. And as I pointed out in my other video the other day, and I'm going to say it now, there are rare occasions where typically young, healthy people who should not suffer anything serious from the flu do get sick and do wind up dying. It's rare, but it can happen. And the same is true for the coronavirus. Now, the coronavirus is new. As I understand it, they have been able to manufacture it in a lab so that they can test it, and they're working on a vaccine. So while it may sound bad that they are manufacturing it in a lab, they're doing that for the purpose of being able to give samples to whoever needs a sample so that they can do testing on a regular basis and come up with a vaccine. So that's what's going on there. Um, back to comparative terms in regards to influenza. This season, the 2019-2020 season, the flu, okay, just in the United States, there have been 8,200 deaths in the United States from the flu. Okay, 54 of those were children. So, when people say you should get a flu vaccine, there's legitimate reason to say that. It's, it's really a good idea to get a vaccination for the flu. But most people, 
young, typical, healthy, everyday people get the flu, they recover, they move on. So what's the problem with the coronavirus? Why are we so worried? Why is it making so many headlines? Again, it's new. It just recently transferred from animal to human. It can spread from human to human. And unlike the flu, we currently don't have a vaccine for it. So if it gets into a high density population area with a lot of young children or a lot of really older people, the risk of large scale death is serious and it needs to be taken into account. Now also with the coronavirus, the likelihood of it turning into pneumonia is higher than the flu. So there's that as well. And finally, we have to take into account that viruses have the capacity to adapt and to mutate. So, for example, and I don't want to panic anybody here, but let's have everything out on the table. For example, when the Spanish flu was a worldwide scenario, I believe it was 1918, um, it killed quite a few people. I believe it was one in 10 that got infected, wound up dying. But that came in three different waves. There was the first outbreak, and then there was a period of time where the number of people that were infected dropped down pretty close to nothing. But then it hit again several months later, and it came back, and it was worse in the second wave. And then it died down to almost nothing again. And then it came back in a third wave. And the third wave wasn't quite as bad as the second, but it was significantly worse than the first. And you have to take that into account. Right now we're in the flu season, but as has been said, we're coming out of the flu season. We're coming into spring and warmer weather. And it is typical that viruses of this nature will, I don't know the proper technical term here, but will recede, will hibernate, whatever the proper term is, I'm sorry, I don't know, and kind of go away. But generally speaking, there's the risk that when it comes back, if it does come back for a second wave or a third wave or whatever, it's going to be worse. So we need to keep that in mind. And if you in my opinion, don't watch the news for your information on the coronavirus, you're probably going to be better off because the news is just pushing the death rate and, and they're really, they're hitting the panic button for a lot of people. What you need to do is go to the CDC website and just follow that and stay up to date on what's going on or listen to someone that is willing to present the information without doing it in panic mode, which is what I'm trying to do and I hope it helps. And understand that typical, normal behavior that helps prevent the spread of a virus is really all that's needed here. Wash your hands, wash them frequently and often. If you come in contact with food, especially raw food if you're cooking, Make sure you wash your hands prior and after. If you come in contact with other people, wash your hands or use hand sanitizer. Um, but washing your hands is like the biggest preventative measure that we can use. It's really important on so many levels, not just for the coronavirus. So for anybody that was interested. I hope some of this is helpful. Stay safe. Try not to panic. Cases are going to continue to increase. This is a contagious disease. The death count will probably go up. But let's not panic. It isn't the flu, but it's very comparable to the flu. Just be aware if you've got people that you're 
associated with family members, friends, whatever, that have young children, you have young children, or the very old, watch them and be aware. If they get sick, take them to get tested and make sure that you know what's going on. Most times, if someone has the flu or even the coronavirus, the doctors are going to say, go home and self-medicate and isolate yourself and recover. That's the typical response. The only time you need hospitalization is if it turns into something more serious and if you're younger, older, have a compromised immune system. So again, I really hope that I didn't talk too long here. I hope this was useful information. And stay safe. Be careful. Thanks for watching.